But first, to that exclusive tonight, I can reveal that the Albanese government has removed the head of ASIO and ASIS from its National Security Committee of Cabinet in a move that reflects the diminishing role of the intelligence chiefs under Labor. My sources tell me that the intelligence community is growing increasingly concerned about the approach taken by the Albanese government on national security. Under the coalition, the head of ASIO and ASIS were permanent members of the National Security Committee of Cabinet. This is the body that makes decisions on the highest risk and most urgent national security matters. The intelligence chiefs gave classified advice on issues that affect our security and our sovereignty. But I can reveal that the nation's most senior bureaucrat, Glyn Davis, under the Albanese government, has removed them as permanent members. Instead, they're now invited in on a case-by-case -case basis. Asked why ASIO and ACES had been removed from the National Security Committee of Cabinet, an Albanese government spokesperson told me today, we don't comment on matters relating to national security. We asked ASIO the same questions and their spokesperson said, membership of cabinet committees is a matter for government. Glyn Davis hasn't responded to our questions, but Shadow Minister for Home Affairs James Patterson says this is a reckless decision. He said it is very concerning to hear that the Albanese government has removed intelligence and security agency heads from the criti critical committee of government considering national security matters. He says they should have available the best advice from our expert agencies when making decisions in the national interest. He says that's pretty hard if they're not in the room. He says no wonder this government has been so weak and incompetent on national security and he's calling for them to reverse this reckless decision urgently. And as I said, Andrew Hastie will be on the show for some live reaction in a moment. But Glyn Davis is the secretary of the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. He's no doubt a distinguished public servant and professor. But his move in removing the intelligence chiefs, along with his review of funding for think tanks, have been met with dismay and alarm in national security circles. When Glyn Davis was the vice chancellor of the University of Melbourne in 2014, he re-signed an agreement to partner with the Confucius Institute. He reportedly wrote in a letter that he was very happy to confirm that the University of Melbourne will continue the collaboration on the development of the Confucius Institute and extend the agreement. Now, at the time, there was already growing concern around the role of the Beijing-sponsored Confucius Institutes in impeding on free speech and being a vehicle for foreign influence. Glyn Davis was also on the Beijing trip when Daniel Andrews committed to the Communist Party's Belt and Road Initiative in 2015. As you'll recall, the former coalition government tore up Andrews' controversial BRI agreement on national security grounds. And you can see Glyn Davis pictured here in the centre of that delegation, right next to Daniel Andrews at Beijing's Temple of Heaven. Davis also accompanied Anthony Albanese when he met with Xi Jinping in late 2022. It was the first time an Australian Prime Minister had met the Chinese president in six years. And Glyn Davis has visited China on numerous other occasions to sign cooperation agreements between universities where he was working. Now, you compare this to politicians working in the national security space, like James Patterson and Andrew Hastie, who've been denied visas to even visit China. Now, also under Anthony Albanese and Glyn Davis, a review announced just last month into whether to cut funding to think tanks, including ASPE, the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, which receives funding from both Australia and the United States. Shutting down ASPE was on China's list of 14 demands that was issued under the coalition government. Well, who did Glyn Davis appoint to lead this review of think tanks? Well, none other but Peter Varghese, who's the Chancellor of the University of Queensland. 
where he famously came up against Drew Pavlou, who was the student suspended from the university for his activism against China. In an appearance at Senate Estimates, Varghese said the University of Queensland couldn't have improved its response to Drew Pavlou, who he also accused of running conspiracy theories. I don't know why Mr Pavlou continued to hold to his conspiracy theory. I think one of the difficulties, frankly, that the university faced uh, was that it was bound to uh, a level of confidentiality in what it could say about the substance of the case uh, at a time when uh, one of the parties to the process didn't feel so bound. Um, and that meant that our ability to deal with this in the media in particular uh, was somewhat constrained. Other than um, being able to publicly comment on it, the university doesn't feel that it mishandled this matter in any way? Uh, my view is that it was handled in accordance with established processes. Now, you would think it seems highly unusual to have the chair of one think tank judging the funding of others. And yet Peter Varghese is the chair of a rival think tank, AsiaLink, which is linked to the Melbourne University. And yet he's leading the review of whether to cut funding to other think tanks, including ASPE, which is unashamedly, unashamedly pro the United States and is often critical of China and foreign interference. But aside from removing the intelligence chiefs from the government's premier national security decision-making body and reviewing funding for a think tank that irritates Beijing, the broader picture here is that the Albanese government has stopped publicly criticising China. Labor figure Cameron Milner, who's going to be on with me in just a minute, he describes the silence as a clear capitulation to China from the Albanese government that he says is deeply worrying. And Penny Wong hasn't mentioned Chinese human rights abuses in Xinjiang in the past 18 months. I've asked her office if we've missed any public comments. They didn't even respond. Yet Penny Wong criticises Israel virtually daily for defending its citizens from a major terrorist attack. And just on Friday, she outrageously reinstated funding to a United Nations organisation where employees took part in the October 7 attacks. She didn't even bother to wait for the formal review into the organisation. Now, the ASIO boss, Mike Burgess, is the only official still daring to speak publicly about Chinese foreign interference, espionage and infiltration. He says it is our number one security threat. But now... His voice is no longer a permanent fixture in the National Security Committee of Cabinet. His removal at a time when we're facing our most challenging set of circumstances since World War II. Russia's war in Ukraine, Israel's fight against terror, Chinese aggression in our region, and the axis of evil with Iran, Russia, China and North Korea forming a closer alliance. At this time, we need our strongest possible national security approach to protect our sovereignty and to stop the disintegration of social cohesion. But instead, we have a weak, left-wing, watered-down national security approach thanks to the foreign policy duds now running the show, Anthony Albanese and Penny Wong.